Welcome to the SleuthCast, and I'm your host, Doc, with my co-hosts, Swiss and Fumpy. I am Doc. I'm an avid gamer, bachelor's and master's in game design, and one of the three hosts of the SleuthCast, and I have a strong passion for researching the educational benefits of gaming and uh, mental health. All right. What's up? I'm, uh, I'm Swiss Bear. I've uh, been a gamer most of my life. I don't necessarily have a genre. I'm a little all over the board here and uh, different uh, generations of gaming as well. So, yeah. Hello, I am Bumpy Bear. <laughs> Bumpy. Uh, I am I am definitely just a, a casual gamer that uh, definitely just likes to relax in some games. I like to get a little competitive with, you know, Call of Duty stupid game <laughs> but no i just like to joke around have fun and uh definitely uh a, a, a newer duration of gaming right on man all right guys so today's topic is uh microtransactions and dlc and obviously one spicy little snippet at the end that'll probably get some people's panties in a twist but hey uh, <laughs> so controversy controversy Creates facts Creates cash. Yes, yes. Uh, if you know, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, like, for me, when I look back at gaming, just like even 10 years ago, I noticed that games were released, like, full content. There's nothing missing. You didn't need a day one patch. You didn't need all this nonsense, you know. And then at some point, we became okay with paying down the road for more DLC for a game that was released half done. And, like, some of the stuff that comes to my mind is, like, Fallout 76 and Cyberpunk that were just garbage like straight un unplayable garbage on launch i mean no man's sky was bad too but that was like yeah, at launch yes at yeah launch, it was that, was, that was what 2016 i think it was it was a long they got time sued. ago they got sued for false advertisement too yeah like they uh, promised so much yeah that game. yeah it was 2016 it came out I'll, I'll tell you what though like those guys they got a set on them because they got shit on by every single person and they still kept pushing. And now everybody's like, Ooh, this game's good. Like, yeah, you know, I, I actually didn't touch like no man's sky in particular. I, uh, I was a mass effect fan. So I came from that franchise where yep. it was a complete story without any form of DLC. And, uh, hearing no man's sky i got excited about it and then you know you wait a little bit to see what people say and wow that game was nowhere near what it said it was supposed to be uh kudos to him for turning it into what it is now but at at, at launch that game was a straight up lie <laughs> yeah it was a dumpster fire and the, like those guys went like radio silent and fixed the shit out of that game did, did everybody everybody here uh, buy it on launch uh, I did not, but I played it about six months after. I was like, let's see if everybody hates it so much. But then I had, didn't play it for a couple of years, and I picked it up right after they added the freighters. I don't know what exactly that was. but I did not buy it launch. Um, I had three friends who had it at launch, though, and could not find a way to return or unload that fast enough. <laughs> That's bad. Yeah, no, I I bought it at lunch with uh, me and my buddy, and we were so like obviously the hype around the entire thing was immense. So we just we really wanted it, so we got it at launch day one. It we're like, wow, this is really cool, and then we were like, okay, this got stale really fucking quick. Yeah, Everything there was no the same. Yep, it was really bad, and then we just stopped, and then I kind of just like tossed it, and I was just like okay fuck this game and then my buddy got back into it he was just like no a lot of shit's changed and you guys told me that a lot of shit yeah it's changed. it's so like, way better now it's like yeah. an actual full-fledged game just like fallout 76 now feels like a fallout game it only took them four years but you know they're there <laughs> i think that's the biggest part of dlc for me um you know I, I'm a fan of the NES and Genesis and those older consoles. So, I mean, I come from an area where DLC isn't, you know, not even thought of. But I was cool with games on uh, 360, PlayStation 2 and stuff, because if there was a form of DLC, nine out of ten times, at least early in the 360's life, it was a true add-on to the game, not the vast majority of the game, where, like, now sometimes, you know, 
the next update or the DLC that was released with it is like an entire second game that should have just been part of the original game mode. I don't understand oh, yeah. that or, you know, that concept. And for me, that's really where I, I became not a fan of DLC is when it was no, it, when it was needed to complete the game. Yes. Like for the game to be whole, you had to have paid for DLC that breaks me. I'm not interested in the game if that's a requirement. Okay, now what and, about DL? Oh, sorry, Fump. You go. I just want to circle back to when you it, uh, intro to it. Uh, you said that everyone's okay with it. I don't think anyone's okay with fucking DLC and pay to play and all that shit. Uh, just it's so forced true, upon true. us that we just kind of need to fucking do it to play a game that we kind of like. True, and I most of that comes from the investors in these companies. They want their money and they want it now. So they're yeah. like, push this half you finish game and deal with these angry people. Um, now, I know personally, I don't mind DLC. Like if it's like 15 bucks and you get ex- five, six expansions or whatever, you know, cool. But when it's like 30 bucks an expansion and it's one level, like that's not worth it. It has to be something substantial to be worth your t- hard-earned money. You know? Right. It's, I think... I, I agree, and I think that's why we're seeing the transition over to kind of like with No Man's Sky now, where while there is a bunch of downloadable content, you didn't have to pay for it. It's yes. been continuing yeah. upgrades to the game. I appreciate that, but I hate I hate when you release essentially a beta yeah. without calling it that, yeah. but use it that way to... Well, you know, two and a half years from now, we'll have fixed 95% of the bugs and it'll yep. be a completely looking game. Yeah. I don't think that's okay. I mean, I get hitting a deadline, but maybe you need to reassess your deadlines if we can't hit them. For sure. I, I Honestly, the investors, they throw so much money at this shit, it's not even funny. And they were just trying to recoup. I think, honestly, personally, I hope Starfield does not like either of those games because that's going to crush Bethesda. Because they had 76 was already a, launched this dog shit. We don't want it to happen again. But Starfield is. <laughs> I hope it's not that same way. Because it feels like it is. Because they're well, not showing a whole lot of anything. Bethesda in general is known for. You know one glitches. Uh, yep. Sometimes welcome glitches. Um, two hardly ever hit their release dates. Correct. And I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. Because. Like Skyrim getting pushed back. I didn't hate that that got pushed back. God damn, that ended up being an amazing game. Mm-hmm. Fallout 3 was the same situation. I mean, going back to that right around where you crossed over from the 360 to the, uh, you know, PlayStation 3 to 4 area as well there. Bethesda was known for a few different things like that, but overall the quality of the games were always solid. All right, so now I got a question for you guys. If you could take the quality of game we have now and sh- go back 10 years to the point where we didn't have DLC and finished games were around, what games do you think would be a masterpiece, much like you know Zelda is considered a masterpiece and Mario because they were fantastic games, fully completed, minimal issues at launch? That's a good question. Like if I could take a game that was not created that way, but that exists now and take the now version of it and launch it as a complete. Yep. Uh, Subnautica. Yes. That's a fantastic one. I like that. Um, that was a game again. I, I saw betas of it and was like, what is it's like underwater Minecraft. I'm not a Minecraft guy. I'll pass, Mm -hmm. you know, respect the game, not my gameplay. Um, however, picking it up in, you know, during the pandemic, it came on uh, Game Pass. I'm obviously the Xbox player here in the group. Yep. Um, came on Game Pass, and then I I lost the next two weeks of my life playing that game. Oh yeah, for um, sure, I did that, too. It, it, that had come out in like 2010, 2012 as a complete game. The way it is now, Minecraft I think wouldn't would've... be around. I think yeah. that is more. It's like Minecraft, but it's there's a lot more that you can do. Uh, procedural survivor games would be a little further along, and you're starting to see some of that now. Yeah, um, per- I know personally, I'm going to be working on, on one. 
procedurally kind of like a rust map where you have the map procedurally generate but you have the nodes where the monuments or whatever would go something like that that's kind of what i was looking at i do find it interesting with games like that uh i'm somebody who played solo a lot uh in my younger days so i find it interesting with games like that because they are geared towards a solo play in some ways um that for a while now you don't see that at all Everything's been geared towards multiplayer online a lot. Yeah, I. See, I uh, it, oh, you're good. I mean, it's funny too. Uh, like, look at Hogwarts. Like, every it's a right. definitely a single player game, and everyone fucking loved it. And everyone's still like, "Where's the online play? I want to, I want to uh, do like a, a spell battle with my fucking friends and shit like this. I want to do yeah. this quest with my friends and everything like that." So it's like. It's like grass is always greener on the other side, I guess, yeah, uh, yeah. for some people. Yeah, it's a yeah, tightrope. It for sure is. Because, you know, if you release a multiplayer, then you're worried about the net code and all them issues that come with that. The game isn't exactly the same game then. And I know people are still mad that it doesn't have uh, Quidditch, but, you know. Yeah. There's <laughs> probably a reason they don't, because it's going to break the game. Because like, if you have Quidditch, then you definitely have to have online play. There's no... Yeah, oh, for like, sure. You can't play the AI. They're all dumber and shit. <laughs> like, real, they are. They're Even, like, yeah. Call of Duty AI walked up right behind one the other day and it didn't do nothing. Just walked right past them. <laughs> His back's turned. He um, couldn't I... hear me fucking huffing from running a mile, you know? I can only imagine the stress on the CPU via the physics engine for that. Between oh, God, the yeah. Flying, like, the flying of the brooms. The snitch has its own thing. Yep. The, you know, the boulders have another, like, these things have very particular movements that they're yes. capable of doing yes. and producing. And, you know, like if you think a baseball game was hard to program, can you imagine having five baseball games going on at once? All I'm it? saying is I would pay to watch that engine implode. <laughs> it would be spectacular. <laughs> it would be spectacular. I mean, uh -huh. they did Quidditch on earlier consoles, and that was kind of really what it came down to was, finding a way to even just keep up with it in a camera angle and a, a viewing system. And yeah. It's, it's just a lot of overload on a processor. Oh, for sure. Uh, to answer your question about like what would become a masterpiece, I'm not quite sure. Uh, Cause I don't really focus on single player games, uh, mm -hmm. but. Oh, you can do multiplayer does... too, I guess. But I, I, I guess one thing that I would say uh, I was talking with uh, my roommates, and we were talking about how uh, Call of Duty had, like, because uh, one of the roommates only played uh, Modern Warfare 2. Like, they just got into it, they like it, blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking about, like, the original Modern Warfare 2, where it's literally, like, the only thing that you could buy is other maps. That was the only DLC, yeah. which is great. And then I was talking about, like, oh, like, in the original Call of Duty, you had one gun, you had one attachment. You had to use a perk to get two attachments. Yep. But now there's all tuning and all this shit like that. Yeah, it's crazy um, how far it's come. Oh, 100%. And which, like, some of it's good, some of it's a little annoying, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but I guess the thing about, like, without the DLC, uh, the thing that bothers me the most is the micro microtransactions. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, think about the damn skins. Uh, like, original Modern Warfare 2, or Modern Warfare 2 2019... Uh, they had a Snoop Dogg skin for like twenty fucking bucks. Yeah, like just to. Yep. Oh, and like, that I, I, perfect segue into my next topic, there, Fump. Perfect segue. <laughs> I'm at, next segue is our DLC content. All right, so now uh, we'd like to point out this segue could be brought to you by whoever would like to sponsor this. <laughs> uh, we would have you on the channel. We would love to be repping pretty much anybody. Uh, uh, preferably ooze marijuana here. products. What? Huh? Well, that's it. <laughs> as long as it's something that uh, we view would be usable by us and good for our listeners, uh, we are more than happy to represent. Uh, yeah, so DLC. Now, like Call of Duty's DLC is free and they had those microtransactions. I think it becomes an issue when they add the bonus effect, which isn't even the art team, because I talked to some people that are, have done developments for stuff like this. They get told the art team specifically, you make this. We want this gun, we want this kind of stuff, make that, and then they get it, and then they're like, oh, throw a perk on there, and then sell it. So, like, the art team is completely unaware, but that selling of all the perks, or, like, the extra 
Extra operator slot is irrelevant. Whatever. Who cares? I use one operator slot and I have four of them. It doesn't matter. You know. But like a UAV every time, that's that's pretty big. Especially yeah. early game. You know, after 60 seconds, you think you're getting shot at. You'll be able to tell. I, I guess that's my whole thing with microtransactions. So, you know, I'm... I don't care about aesthetics and stuff in games and add-ons and buy-ons. I'm I'm not a person that gets into that if it doesn't change the gameplay. Yeah. Now, if it's a like an upgraded weapon of some kind that actually like changes how your in-game works and how you would play through, that I've got a bit of an issue with. Um I I guess I'm old school with the earn it situation thought process. Yeah, I don't I'm not a fan of the pay to win, especially when it no. comes to like theoretically, right? If you work a nine to five job, you get home, maybe you play an hour or two, but on the weekends, maybe you play more. But if you have a wife and kids, it's you're not getting much time. So those guys are like, Oh yeah, I'll definitely buy that skin if it gives me a free bonus every time I play. And and that's honestly why they do it for the casuals, those filthy casuals. Yeah, and then then people take advantage of it. People who play nonstop, they're like, "Oh, I want this because it's available." Yeah. When they definitely don't even fucking need it. Exactly. That's why I know yeah. like games like Fortnite, it's all cosmetics. Fall, Fallout seventy six, all cosmetics, camp yeah. items and shit. Like, pay to win my ass. I fucking pay to get cool shit. You like, know? don't get me wrong, especially with like GTA, uh, GTA five. Oh yeah, that's I... bad. That's a bad one. I put a lot of money into that game <laughs> just for just for having money, just to buy new cars, just to get that yep. fucking flying bike that bullshit up. Like I, I literally just it, it it's definitely a pay to win situation, even though it's literally just like you guys said, cosmetics. There's no point to have that bike that fucking flies and blows shit up, but I just wanted it. <laughs> exactly. So uh Swiss Bear here is the lone sports game player uh that's not like racing. As the football, like I'm a Madden, NBA, 2K, that type of thing, bas- baseball, NHL. Uh, Mutt leagues are huge on those games, and it's literally getting packs of cards to create your team out of it to compete with others online and stuff. And it's cool that you can earn coins to buy packs, but it's crap that you can literally just pay like $150 and unlock all the best or individually buy just the best cards. Mm -hmm. So you can put together the best possible team you could and just own. You don't have to work for it. Uh, That type of microtransaction I hate specifically in sports games because it's kind of taken over a lot of how some of those games work. Some are worse than others, but... Yeah, that's a lot of pay to win in sports games. No, like even in MLB, it's, I don't know about online, but they have the same thing, right? Where you can uh, buy, get to like the player cards. Even soccer has that too. Yeah, with the ultimate team. I think it'd be different if you earned a lot more coins during gameplay than having to grind for hours to get a pack. Well, like so, back in the old Madden games, they used to have the Madden cards, and you know this is pre online. But some of them would be, you know, you could use them to play against a buddy and uh, instead of like first and 10, it's first and 20 or first and five. Or yep. if you run out of bounds, instead of being out of bounds, it transported you to the other side of the field. Like these were fun things to play and use with your friends. Yep. But that system gave you random packs of cards based on how you played or currency for those cards based on how you played during like season mode and other stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand why that wouldn't still be the main focus, especially with Madden having their own uh, championship and stuff. Like, if you really want to flaunt your skills, like, show me the dude who has figured out how to, like, maximize his income via, you know, only being able to do things in-game versus, like, yeah, don't get me wrong, his strategy is great and stuff like that, or, you know... I guess I'd prefer to see it more that way from a competitive level. Okay. I feel you there. I don't want to... I mean... Yeah, I think the biggest problem they have with the competitive, pretty much anything, is like the engine, especially for Madden, is so broken. You can't play on all Madden. You can't complete a fucking pass. You have to run and then all audible into a pass play in order to complete a pass. You can, but it breaks down to the... uh, 
it's still that old school thing where like there are 15 to 20 broken plays in the game yes as long as you do this and this or the ai never understood how to do this so as long as you create this like that's no longer football that's that's now and i mean don't get me wrong it's been part of gaming for years that's you just understanding and breaking the game yourself. yes yes for sure same as with like old school games like paperboy and pitfall and all those games you could find a way to break it just break it and beat the game easy it's still it's the same thing as speed running you oh, know, I mean, they you find know. a like elden ring where they had this zip glitch where they zipped all the way to the end castle like in five minutes oh. to beat the fucking game like get out of here man it's fucking ridiculous super mario 64 you know who's the guy that figured out that you uh didn't have a top speed going backwards and it allowed mm-hmm. it to like twerk through doors <laughs> yes it's Honestly, me. yeah. <laughs> Back that ass up, Mario. Fucking hell. Honestly, kudos to those people who just like just do random shit. Just, I mean, like yeah. it's always oh, cool to yeah. see. Don't get me wrong, but like, what are you know? As somebody who doesn't have the uh, mindset for that, I'm always just like would love to have the conversation with the person. So, like, so what were you doing when you found out that like backwards has no speed limit? like bagging that ass up that's what they were doing (laughs) angry were you frustrated or were you just enjoying the view i mean (laughs) (laughs) they were enjoying the view hey i'm just saying Uh, i also (laughs) so back to the back to the dlc thing i think a lot of these games when they do the dlc it's to extend the life cycle of their game because it used to be like Call of Duty was one year, boom, done. Next one, nobody cared about the old one. And then you got like no man, like again, No Man's Sky has been around since 2016. It's damn near 10 years that people still play the shit out of that game. You know, Fallout 76, 2018, CS:GO. God, don't even know when the fuck that released, yeah, but people still honestly. competitively play that. You know, like the life cycle of the game is usually short but when they've lived a long time like minecraft virtually no updates no change to the gameplay they've just added biomes and mobs and people still play the shit out of that game like that's a whole nother topic for another oh, time oh Not for sure they can do for the longevity of oh the game. god yes yes stay tuned for minecraft <laughs> <laughs> yeah minecraft oh. fallout lo- mods skyrim mods like any bethesda game you can mod because they like that because it makes yeah. people care about their game. Those are the first, like I said before, uh, expect glitches. It's going to be late. And then number three, the modding community is going to be awesome. Yes. I never knew I wanted an angry Thomas the Tank Engine as a dragon. I do not. <laughs> Bro, Macho Man Randy Savage as a death claw is awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, so... Spicy topic, fellas. You ready? Uh, I'm not. A, I'm not a you spice guy. But yeah, your thing here. Yeah. So this is this is a topic near and dear to my heart. Um, I when I was getting my master's, I did my thesis research on the benefits of gaming and mental health. I did a survey. They were pissed because I did a survey. I didn't ask their permission, so I couldn't use my data. But from mm-hmm. what I've collected initially, in the initial like hundred people that I surveyed. 70% of those with mental health disorders benefited from gaming. So, like, there's a correlation how to prove it scientifically so that people value it and not just like, oh, you're wasting your time. Not really. I'm cog- be using my cognitive abilities, problem solving, hand-eye coordination, social skills, all that shit we, we desperately need. And especially when, like, the pandemic was here and you're locked in your house. How else are you going to talk to anybody? You know, if you don't get to go out, play online games. Uh, But I definitely, I made up a survey, so we'll put that in the description of the the podcast if you wish to take it and help said research, because I will definitely be posting, I'm hoping to get about a thousand plus respondents so that I can have a solid data set to write a paper on. Only you, Dr. Bear. (laughs) Doc ain't fucking around, all right? But yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I know like when I play, it definitely helps my mood. And if I'm in a shitty mood, I'm going to play Call of Duty. That's a terrible idea. I don't do that because you just that get more of a shitty say. mood. So like 
if I'm in a really shitty mood, I'll throw on some Fallout and play the fucking Pit Boy music and listen to some old school shit and just bullshit around. Hey, puts man, puts me in a better mood. Game with your friends in a fun game, that's a good time. Puts you in a better mood. Fallout games are low-key amazing music. Yeah, for sure. Great fucking music. Dude. Hell yeah, dude. Um, But, I mean, for me, uh, I, I, I somewhat agree with you. Uh, obviously, my go-to with me and my friends is definitely Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely not the go-to if you want to, you know, chill out. <laughs> uh, you and your so bloodlust, gonna... dude. You and your bloodlust. <laughs> like, the, there's times where if I'm, like, mad or something and I want to play a game, I'm going to definitely go. To, I'm going to text my buddy and be like, hey, let's play speedrunners or let's play just a stupid arcade game that we can just shut our brains off and yeah, just dick around. Um, For sure. But, no, de- definitely uh, anything competitive will get me just more mad because, I mean, like, I... As a kid, as a as a young lad, I uh, I broke a few controllers. I broke a few headsets. I was <laughs> definitely not. Uh, my son, my son can relate. He broke two fu- two headsets and he smashed a controller. So it's pretty dope. Jeez. I, I haven't thrown a controller in seven years. Ex- Do it exactly. I haven't whipped a controller since the last <laughs> like, time I did it. <laughs> um, and, and tell me now, what 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 games did you guys break a controller with? Skate. Dark Skate, Souls. Skate. Dark, Dark Souls. Souls. I can understand. Oh yeah, fuck that dude. <laughs> I heated that fucking controller across the house and it <laughs> stuck in the wall, bro. Fuck this game. Uh, WWE 2010. <laughs> yeah. Uh, legendary difficulty. Oh yeah, that uh, shit is brutal. Uh, vivid memories of being asked to do a uh, handicap match as my created wrestler versus Shawn Michaels. And uh, The Undertaker. (laughs) Both of those guys on Legendary, even after you have them like bleeding and completely zonked out, if you do your finisher, you only have about 15 seconds before they get back up. So figuring out how to put both of them down and cover one is intense. And I remember that being a special type of nightmare. It sounds sounds terrible. Um, For me, gaming... I, I guess I want to speak from a, like, if I could speak to parents, I uh, don't have children myself. I do have multiple nieces and nephews, though. And I know for me, when I talk to parents and bring up that I, you know, I still game in my 30s, most of them, you get a mixed reaction these days, depending oh, on sure. the age. Mm-hmm. But I guess if I could say anything, it'd be to parents, and it's, Don't underestimate the opportunity in front of you to teach. It may not be the way or the medium that you're expecting to, but you can. You'll be able to reach them for sure because they understand what you're talking about. Well, you you can find it in pretty much anything these days in different genres and stuff. Um, You know, Minecraft we see as silly, this, that, and the other thing. But if you try doing a campaign, like an actual playthrough with your kid, you're teaching them inventory management, which also articulates into money skills and other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, you can take another game like Portal, where it's a one player game. And I'm talking for, you know, those 12 to 15 year old type areas there where this is problem solving on a three dimensional level where you have to be creative with your problem solving. There is no Google kind of thing for it because there's a thousand ways to solve it and if you want to interact with your kids sit down and figure out the puzzle with them yeah Uh, i I bet you'd be amazed by some of what you learn about your own child because that's another thing too watching the behavior in a game and stuff like those and there's multiple others i could be throwing out here i mean i I know personally a game like hello neighbor is fantastic not the fact that you're breaking into your neighbor's house that's irrelevant, but the <laughs> fact that you have to change the way you play the game because the neighbor learns how you play the game. Wait, actually? Yeah. yeah. Really cool. Yeah, he, like, you keep going to the front door, he'll set bear traps so you have to go through a window. Like, you keep changing it up, he'll never know where you're coming from, but these a lot of these videos, like, my son watches YouTube all the time. He's watching Hello Neighbor, they keep going through the front door. I'm like, you're just asking for trouble. The AI knows what you're doing. And he's like, really? and I was like, that's the future of gaming is they're making AI able to think like patterns that you're making to just their gameplay to make it more difficult on you. I want to say it was the second or third game in the Batman franchise there. Dr. Freeze was programmed that way. 
uh, you had to hit them like four times and there was only like eight ways to do it. And you couldn't repeat any of them. That's actually really Is that cool. uh, Arkham Knight? I think so. Uh, it's one I haven't played. I have it in my library. I just haven't played it. Solid game. Oh, I, have to I like Batman games. They're fun. I'm not a, like I'm a big Marvel guy, but I like Batman. Flash is meh. Flash is mid just because he's fast. Nobody cares. Super <laughs> speed. <laughs> Who cares if you can go fast? Can you pick up the chicks like Superman and Batman? No, loser. Just kidding. He's he not a loser. Know what's happening. Um, yeah, they they didn't even know. They don't know. That's a Dateline NBC episode right there. Holy shit. The Flash might be the only human that knows whether a bear shits in the woods or not. You know, <laughs> I can confirm yeah. that bears do shit in the woods as I am a bear. bear. Same here. <laughs> I use I use a potty. <laughs> like the little potty that sings songs to you so you know you went yeah. potty? Nice. <laughs> Is that why you bought that watch? Yep, exactly. It's got to remind him to go potty. <laughs> Near construction, got a nice porta potty. There you go. <laughs> no, you got to set it directly in the sunlight with no available shade, so it heats up real nice. That's that's yeah, the key to porta potty Sweet. placement. Back to topic, though. In all seriousness, um, I'm not saying that you can learn or that all games are great for teaching or learning, but there is definitely plenty of variety and selection out there. I mean, look at the Mario Party series. Um, those are a bunch of mini games, and the whole point of the randomness of them is to make you constantly change the way you're thinking game yep. to game. Um, and exactly. it's meant to be social. It promotes a lot of different stuff. I mean, you got to give kudos to Nintendo in general for all these years of really being very family oriented on that. And you know, I, I've I've seen learning games. I've played actual learning games. And I got to yeah. say, I'm not a fan. Um, there's yeah, no there's, way. there's, you can fancy it up, but even then, you'll know you're learning. It's still forceful learning. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, learning sucks. There's a fine line though to with the learning game. If you can hit that fine line, you're gonna have a hit on your hands. Like whether it's a really good game, or if it's just strictly learning, you gotta find that balance. Because I, sure. I've seen people working on some of these learning games, and they're solid, but they're not at the fine oh, line. And, and it's more either more game or more teachy than like the sweet spot where the kids are going to want to do it. It's got to be more passive on that where yeah. like you kind of don't realize you're learning it or being Al taught it. I Almost mean, like Assassin's Creed, like where you learn a little bit of history. Most of that's, you know, fi fictional, but some of it's accurate, you know, like the accuracy mm -hmm. needs to be there, but. Well, and see, I, I also think about games like Tetris, um, you know, extremely simplistic game, but if you've got a child with uh, ADHD. Oh God. Yeah. I'm, yes. I'm, and sorting things out a game like tetris where you are literally being asked to sort things out and you can kind of do it at your speed you can start to understand what's actually going on as you're you know is your child struggling to keep up or are they slamming parts down too fast and that's what's messing them up like yeah. you can start to pick up what you need to you know you can start to recognize certain issues with stuff oh, like for that sure. I think that's the big thing with Tetris as, as a whole. It's been around for years, never changed. It's cool. And the fact that it came from Russia is hilarious to me. Like, yeah. there's a whole fiasco, dude. Like, some dude got a, threatened by a Spetsnaz and shit for the game. It's fucking wild. You have to fuck check it out, man. No, the history on it is. It is very insane. Accurate. Yeah. I think with games like that, or just any game in general, we're where you can learn to manage stuff and helps the kids more so than just like instant gratification games like, you know, Call of Duty, Fortnite, kill somebody, boom, you get a pop-up. Cool. Well, right. like, like, you uh, know. Look at some of the cooking games and stuff too, even, you know, uh, it, it might be as simple as I clicked on a hot dog, I put the hot dog on the grill, you know. Yep. Um, I wish I could think of a couple of them off the top of my head. Cooking uh, Mama is a big one. Overcooked, Overcooked yep. yeah. Overcooked and big Mama, yeah. Um, you also, if you if you know if, if your child is competitive and is trying to three star those, or if you're playing with them, maybe uh, figuring out how to work in tandem is a whole nother thing. And mm -hmm. you know that builds teamwork. You know, you know, resource management and stuff. It also is. I 
is a bear who enjoys cooking. Um, it may be very simplified, but they're right. Making some of that food isn't as simple, you know, like a pizza isn't always just take it out of the freezer and pop it in. In all reality, it's, you know, the dough, the cheese, the sauce, the toppings, like there's a process to it. And even something as simple as that for a seven, eight year old to be grasping that like, hey, actually, you know, yeah. making a hamburger takes a little more than just this. Okay. Hell yeah. So, Fumpy, do you think that gaming is beneficial to mental health? What's what's your fu- official take? Your official, official opinion. Take. Yeah, your um, official take. To an extent. I do believe that uh, it is kind of an escape, so mm-hmm. people can uh, overuse it and take advantage of it to escape their problems and everything. But uh, And then there is games out there, like you said, that actually teach or teach... Yep. Uh, have a good story mother teaches lessons or yeah. actually like so, so to an extent i do believe that it does help uh some of the mental state um in, within reason like i said yeah uh but yeah oh swissy bear you gave us your answer didn't you oh yeah all right well my answer is i think it's great and i think it helps The one issue I do see is obviously playtime. Like letting a five-year-old play video games for 14 hours is fucking melting their brain. They're not getting any benefit past an hour max. And then they get overstimulated and then they get angry when you ask them to turn it off because they need an instant gratification immediately from whatever they were playing. That's the hard part about the whole study that I want to do. Like, It's adults. Like We're all adults. When you start putting off your your, um, your tasks you need to do your responsibilities to game that is an issue i used to be the same way i used to put shit off all the time the game and now i'll go do shit instead of game which sucks <laughs> I'm not gonna lie i'd rather game but like you know life the life goes on it doesn't stop when you're gaming it keeps going so you have to handle your shit before you do your thing no and i mean i you know i agree wholeheartedly with that it can definitely, you know, obviously gaming addiction is a real thing and it can be a problem. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, like I said, learning that balance is a big thing. You know, no, nothing's so good there isn't some bad in it. Nothing's so bad there isn't some good in it. Oh, for sure. All right. I think that wraps up episode one, guys. That's fantastic. So it's official. Fumpy hates video games and uh, Swiss hates to cook. <laughs> and doc hates uh thc with a passion it's terrible don't do it <laughs> sponsor us <laughs> come on come on bitches make a dr bear not, not make a dr bear brand of uh flavor it tastes like regrets and fucking granny's cookies dude <laughs> why does it taste so good but it smells so bad <laughs>